Well, well. I was wondering how long it was going to take you to find this place, Shadowstar. When I asked Sunspot and Captain Gunny to bring me to Canterlot so I could find what was hidden in the old base of the Children of the Night, they both told me the place was deadly. Elliot confirmed that not long after. Still, I didn't know what I was getting into, but I didn't care. At least that's what I thought until I saw the mythical place. We flew closer to the tall mountain where the once beautiful castle sat on the edge of the mountain. I could tell even from here that the city of Canterlot and the castle itself had once been a wonder to behold. I'd seen pictures of the location in my history books. What was once captured as the true beauty, a staple of high society and ruling over all of Equestria, Canterlot, was a shell of its former glory. I saw a small chunk of Canterlot fall into the foggy abyss underneath it. The castle was crumbling and dead-looking. The city below had buildings falling down, and I could see creatures, probably ghouls, roaming around. The air around the place looked sickly and dead in the dim light that poked through the cloud cover. But nothing was as strange as the eerie pink mist that seemed to pour out of the buildings themselves. It washed out over the city like slow-moving flood, working its way down the mountain and slowly dissipating as it fell. From where we were now, hovering close to the city, but not close enough to the pink mist, I saw bones of ponies fused to the streets, carts and other ponies, and objects too. Quite a nasty sight, huh? Elliot said as he looked down at the former capital of Equestria. I had no idea what this bad. What kind of spell did the zebras use to do that? I asked. No idea, Elliot replied. But I do know that whatever it was, it's still active in the city. I looked at him in shock. How can a spell still be active after 200 years? He shrugged. Still no idea. Sunspot and I haven't been able to look into it yet. You gotta remember that we're also new to the wasteland and haven't had the time to dig into the past as much as we'd like. There's nothing in the past that needs bringing up and all of that, Gunny said, coming to look down at the city. Gunny and you all should keep the ship up here and fly down to where you be needing. Why do you say that? I asked. I know there's a large enough platform for the bitter cob to land down there. Aye, but that not be the problem. No, it be them, he said, pointing a hoof way down to the streets of Canterlot. I squinted, but I could only make out small black dots. I don't see anything. <clears throat> ya need your eyes checked, Gunny said, reaching into his overcoat with a hoof and pulling out a spyglass. Here! Be looking through that. I took the spyglass with my magic and looked down at the place he'd been pointing to before. It took me a moment, but then I saw them. A small gray unicorn with a pip buck on her right foreleg, and another cor unicorn who looked a little older and had a similar coloring to my own, apart from the gold and red stripe on her mane and tail. There was also a copper-colored pegasus who had a dashite brand on him from the look of it, they were making their way past a building. The smaller one seemed to be leading into the city. Who are they? I asked. Elliot answered. No idea, but it's a good thing that we aren't heading into the city ourselves. Or they could be a problem. It'd be best to leave the twins to fly you down and Gunny to the location. Gunny said. It's not a bad idea. Sunspot said, coming to look down at Canterlot with us. The bitter cop should be fine up here for a little while. I still don't see why we have to worry about a few ponies in the city, I said. It ain't about them, only. Gunny also sees a couple of Alawits near the castle, too, Gunny said, pointing to a balcony that overlooked Canterlot. He turned the spyglass towards it, and he was right. I could see a couple of alicorns just inside the broken doors of the castle. I lowered the supply glass, saying, Okay, fine. We'll do it your way. Good on ya, Shadow, Gunny said with a smile. Okay, then. 
Let's be heading off. No time like the now. A few minutes later, Sunspot and Elliot were flying Gunny and myself over the dilapidated city, towards the tallest cliff in the side of the mountain. The bitter cob was hovering in the distance, barely noticeable against the gloomy sky. I was riding on Sunspot's back. Gunny was being held by Elliot as we made our way closer to our destination. When we were almost there, when a few shots rang out in the city below, but no bullets flew up at us. It must have been from the ponies we saw before. Sounds like one mighty powerful revolver to Gunny's ears, Gunny said, looking down at the city. Gunny'd like to get his hooves on a gun like that. You can tell just by the sound of it? I asked. Sure, Gunny can. He be an expert with things that go boom, the mad captain said with a chuckle. We're almost there, Sunspot said as she flapped her wings harder and flew closer to the mountain. Only a minute later, we landed on the large platform that overlooked the city. The cliff was about 25 meters high than the tallest tower of the castle. The pink cloud was just rolling off the top of said tower, but it seemed not to be able to reach this high. I was grateful for that. I may not understand what the cloud did, but it had to be bad from the looks of Canterlot. Ignoring the sight of the city, I turned towards the large doors that led into the children's old base. In Lightning Dust's memory, when she first came to the place, the doors had been gold and beautiful. Over 200 years later, however, the doors were diminished and sad-looking. They still had gold, but tarnished over time, with heaven knows how many storms that must have raged across here since the last time some pony polished or cleaned them. Gunny walked over to the door and looked it over. How's Gunny to get in? I ain't no knobber or nothing. Just let me show you, I said as I walked past him. I put a hoof on the door, took a deep breath, and recited the words I heard Night Stalker say in Lightning Dust's memory. By the night's glory, I request passage into the home of the children who look to the sky for protection. Night's glory. Children looking for protection? Elliot asked, but before I could answer, the doors glowed with a bright light and slowly opened. Gunny needs to get himself something like that, Gunny said as he looked at the now beautiful golden doors. The spell to open them must have cleaned them again, because now they shine just as bright as they had in Lightning Dust's memory. I stepped forward and into the old base. I wasn't sure what I'd find in here. All I saw in Lightning's memory was the main chamber when she first joined the children. All the other memory orbs of the Children of the Night I found were all in New Pegasus. Well, except for the fight against the Pegasus Traitor and the Grand Galloping Gala. But those hadn't been at this base. I had always assumed they moved to New Pegasus not long after Lightning joined. From the looks of the main chamber, I was wrong. The furniture had been changed since that last memory I saw. There were odds and ends lying around, and a couple of new terminals were sitting in one corner of the room. If it wasn't for the dust and the shabby look of the place... I would have thought that some pony had been here after Night Stalker last visited. Maybe they used the base whenever a child of the night was in Canterlot. I wasn't sure. It honestly didn't matter. Are any of you good with terminals? I asked, looking back to Sunspot, Elliot, and Gunny, who were looking around the place in awe. Elliot looked back to me, saying, I am. What do you need? See if you can get the lights on and check to see if there's any security footage. I'd like to see when the last time a pony was in here. I said, turning towards the hallway that led to another room. I'm on it, Elliot said, walking over the terminals on the corner. Gunny is going to be looking around the room for a bit. Sonny, you go with Shadow, Gunny said. Aye, aye, she said, following me down the hallway. As we walked, I said, you don't have to follow me. Uh, nobody apart from the... Children of the night know how to get into this place. Maybe, but you should always be on your guard, she said, looking at the doors at each side of the hallway. And this place is kind of creepy. I don't think any ponies have been in here for at least a hundred or sixty years or so, I said as I walked up to a door on one side of the hallway and checked it. It was locked. Sighing, I pulled out a bobby pin and a screwdriver I got from Charity and started on the lock. 
What are you doing? Sunspot asked. Picking the lock, I said as I worked the bobby pin around. I felt the pins press into place, then twisted the lock with a screwdriver. There we go. Not too bad. As I pushed the door open with a hoof, Sunspot asked, Where'd you learn to do that? I shrugged as I looked around the room. It was only a bedroom with a single bed and a desk in one corner. No personal effects to be found at all, so I turned back into the hall, saying, Found a book in my old stable that showed the inner workings of most kinds of locks. I used to be a bit of a troublemaker, so I started teaching myself how to pick them. My overmare used to have security confiscate things for me when I was a filly, so I used to sneak into their area of the stable, using the air ducts, and steal whatever they took back. I'm surprised you got away with that, she said as I moved to another door and picked the next lock. She never caught me doing it. I knew there were a few buying spots in the hallways above the security floor. There was also a duct I could use in that blind spot, so I used it when I could. Security only has cameras where the cells are, so I was able to get away with most things. The lock clicked and I pushed open the door, finding the same sight as the last room. Damn, I hope not all the rooms in this place are like this one. What is it you're hoping to find? Sunspot asked. Not sure yet. I know that Night Stalker left something here, and I need to find it. I said as I continued down the hall. It'd help if you knew what we were looking for, she said. At least one thing that I know of is it's a weapon of some kind, or notes on how to stop something called Project Stargazer. I said as we came up to an end of the hall where a single large door was set. There wasn't any kind of doorknob or even a keyhole for me to pick. A weapon, huh? Also, what's Project Stargazer? She asked. Project Stargazer is the name of the project that was meant to pull power from stars. It's part of a bigger project, one that I'm trying to stop any pony from using again. I said as I looked around the edge of the door. Noble of you, then. She said with a shiver. If it's anything like Project Chimera, then I'd want to put a stop to it, too. It's worse than what was done to you. At least I believe it is. I said as I found what I was looking for finally. Ah, here we go. How do you open doors like that anyway? There's no keyhole, she asked. Like this, I said as I pushed a small button next to the door. A small sapphire popped out of the wall. It has a genetic scanner on it. The gem flashed with a blue light. The light ran over my body quickly, and then the gem popped back into the wall, a small voice saying, Welcome, child of the night. Sunspot looked confused as the door vanished into the wall and slid open. How did you get that thing to think you were a child of the night? I didn't. I just happened to be related to, like, three of the children of the night. I said as I walked into the room. The room wasn't huge, but it was a lot bigger than the chamber when you first came into the place. It looked like a mix of a library, an armory, a sitting room, a laboratory, and a museum. The library part was harder to make out since there weren't any books, but large bookshelves set into the back wall. In the middle of the room stood at least 20 stands with glass boxes of varying sizes, some with items inside. At the far corner, a small lab was set up with all kinds of stuff that I knew nothing about. I just remembered me of Mom's small lab in the bunker when we were lifting with the Steel Rangers. In the other corner, I looked up, and taking up about half of each wall were rows of pre -world, old pre-war weapons. And on the side closet to the door was a large terminal and a few beanbags set up around it, like a sitting area with a couple of tables next to each one. As soon as I walked into the room, the lights overhead came on, taking away the gloomy look from the emergency security lights that had only been illumination before. Sunspot smiled a little, saying, I guess Elliot got the power back on. The terminal booted up with a soft hum, and speakers came to life from the ceiling, playing a soft jazz number. I smiled along with her. Makes it feel a lot nicer in here. Now if the dust was gone and some of the grime cleaned up, it'd be almost homey. Sunspot looked towards the weapon rack, saying, 
You think the weapon is we're looking for is over there? No idea. I'm going to see if I can hack into the terminal and check to see if there's anything that can help. I said, walking towards the terminal. You can take whatever you want from the rack, though. I don't think I'll need any of those. Sounds good to me, Sunspot said, heading over to the rack of weapons as I went for the larger terminal. The terminal reminded me a lot of the one of the Lucky Horseshoe, the same one Mr. Topps used to communicate with ponies. Well, to me at least. It just looked like an older model. I tapped a couple of keys, booting up the terminal. It took a little while for it to switch on and be ready to use. Once it was up, it asked for a username and a password. Looking around, I found a place I could hook the Mark II up to, so I did. Like always, the Mark II did its work and got me past the normal login and right to the security bypass logs. As I worked on finding the correct password, I heard Gunny come into the room. Ah, Gunny likes this room, he does. Look at all the gizmos and whatchamacallits here, eh? I heard Gunny say as he walked by me. Just as he came in, I was about to finally get the right password. It was advantageous. The terminal came to a screen with a huge list of items. I smiled, saying, Awesome. I was hoping I could get in quickly. I think I'm getting better at this hacking stuff. Gunny poked his head around me, saying, What's all that stuff by the bay? I rolled my eyes. I thought you were going to check out the main room while Sunspot and I checked this one out. Gunny did check the other room, didn't find nothing. Just a bunch of dust and all that. Gunny be wanting to see what was in this room. Lots of better stuff in here, he said with a chuckle. Can you at least give me a little space? I asked as I started to look through the list of items and whatever else was on this. Gunny be the captain here, not you, he said with a huff. Well, we aren't on your ship anymore, Captain Gunny. We're in the base of the Children of the Night, who happen to be my ancestors. So technically, you're in my place now. So, I make the rules. I said as I brought up the list of items that were inventoried here. So that how it be then. Fine, if you want to push old Gunny away, so be it. He said, moving away, muttering to himself. Not like Gunny cared what was on it anyhow, crazy tiny unicorn. I ignored him as I started going through the list again. If I had time to go through everything that was on this terminal, I would. Sadly, there was so much on here that I'd have to spend a week, if not longer, reading through every single file stored here. What I needed to find was the weapon that could kill Aquila, if that's what Night Stalker meant when he said destroying Stargazer. After an undermined amount of time, something caught my eye. It was the second to last item on the list. It said, Memory Crystal, Fall of the Queen of the Night. I clicked on it and watched as another message came up. Item in box 2D, do you wish to unlock? Interested even more now, I clicked yes and watched as another message popped up following that one. Blue, violet, red, blue, red, yellow, orange, green. I was able to read it twice before the message vanished. I was able to see if I could look it over again when a soft light caught my eye where the glass box was. Looking over, I saw one of the boxes were lit up and the case's top was open now. Moving over to it, I saw what was inside. It was another memory crystal. It was about the same size as the one I found in Manette's lab. I was about to pick it up on magic when I remembered the warnings about what could happen. Looking over at Sunspot, who was looking over a large rifle, I asked, Sunspot, can you... Help me out. She looked over at me, putting the rifle down. Sure, what do you need? I pointed at the crystal. I need you to grab this for me. I can't reach it because of my height, and I can't grab it my magic because that'd be too dangerous. She walked over and looked at the crystal. What is it and how dangerous are we talking? It's only dangerous for a unicorn to grab with their magic. You'll be fine. As for what it is, it's a memory crystal. I think it's an old version of a memory orb, I said. She shrugged. Okay, as long as it won't do anything to me. She reached into the glass box with her paw and carefully picked it up. 
saying, Damn, this thing's heavier than it looks. I know. Now, put it in my saddlebags? I said, turning so she could reach. Sure thing, she said, and she did such. Is this the weapon you were looking for? No, I think that's the other thing I need to find. I'm still looking for the weapon, I said when she was done and heading back to the terminal. Sonny, come look at what Captain Gunny's found, Gunny said next to the weapon rack. <laughs> Good luck, Sunspot said with a soft chuckle. I continued to look through the items. There was a lot of interesting stuff here, like Princess Luna's first crown, a spear that belonged to an original member of the children from over a thousand years ago. There was a spell book that was once owned by a, the first leader of the Children of the Night, Star Swirled Bearded's favorite hat. Stuff like that, mostly, but nothing about a weapon that could kill a star creature. Most of the stuff wasn't anything I needed, but I did open the case for the spell book. I went back to the glass boxes and took the very old book out and placed it in my saddlebags. Once I was done with that, I went back to the terminal and started checking a list named Specialty Weapons, and that's where I saw the other thing that almost made me gasp. There was only two items here. One was listed as the Knight's Slayer, and the other, Demon Slayer. Demon Slayer was the name of my father's revolver. I clicked on it and saw a message coming up. Revolver, 42 caliber black, embedded with four gems and enchanted by Princess Luna herself. When used with ammunition that is engraved with her cutie mark, it can kill almost any kind of creature with a single shot. If normal ammunition is used, this revolver still has more kick and power than a normal gun of its make. Item can be found in Weapon Rack Space L01. I looked over at the weapon rack and saw part of it lit up like the boxes had been. I ran over to it, excited to finally get my hooves on what it came for, only to feel my heart sink as I saw the empty space where the revolver should be. It was gone which means that either someone stole it a long time ago, or the Guardian came for it. Dad's gun was also called the Demon Slayer, but that didn't mean it was the same revolver. It could be a replica, but still I'd have to ask him. It was then that I noticed the other item hanging from next to where Demon Slayer should be. A set of long, slender blades that shined like a star was hanging there. They were a lot longer than any sword I had ever seen and they had a bend to them that resembled the curve of a wing. They also had a few hinges in them so they could fold and move, almost like they were meant for the wings of a pegasus. Not taking my eyes off the blades, I asked. Sunspot, do you know what these are? She was only a couple meters away from me, pushing Gunny back from a set of pistols that looked like they were made of gold. She looked over at the blades, saying, Yeah, those are wing blades. Some Pegasi used them during the war. They're hard to learn how to use, but once you do, they're very effective. I couldn't help but smile as I looked down with my magic. They folded easily enough. Do you know how to use them? Gunny likes the look of them. Sonny or Elliot would be able to do good work for Captain Gunny with a set of those. Gunny said, coming to look at the blades too. I'm okay with them. But I could never get some of the flight patterns down. You need to make them work, right? You need to be an expert flyer to use them properly, she said. Even then, with how I am now, I can't use them. My wings are too big. As she said this, I looked down and saw a box sitting on a small shelf just under where the blades were set. That looked perfect for them to be placed in. Sunspot might not be able to use the blades, but I knew a Pegasus who most likely could. Stardust likes to style himself as an expert sniper, but I've seen him fight hoof to hoof, and he was a great flyer too. So I opened the box, saw that they had a liner in them that was made for the wing blades to go into with a small plaque that read, The Night Slayer. I placed the blades into it, then put them into my saddlebags. Sorry, Shadow. No luck with the other terminal in the other room. Elliot said, coming to join us from the far hall. The hard drive's been fried. It's fine. I think we found what we needed. You can also take anything you want here, though. But I think we should hurry. 
I said, walking back to the larger terminal so I could either lock it down again or open the rest of the boxes. That'll be a horde of loot to be finding, Gunny said, starting to take down any rifle he could get his hooves on. Elliot, take as many as you can carry. I went back to the terminal when the screen on it switched from the list of items and other crap to a video feed. I jumped, then took a step back as the monitor showed a darkened room with a pony sitting in a large chair, almost like a throne. I couldn't make out the pony's face, or any details about him apart from the slightly yellow eyes that caught a little bit of the light in the dark room. A chuckle emanated from the screen, followed by a voice that was harsh and sounded almost like a ghoul. Well, well. I was wondering how long it would take you to find this place, Shadow Star. The figure said. I'll say, with how much you like to stick your nose into the Enclave's business and into the past, I thought you'd have come to this old base a long time ago. It took me a moment to find my voice. Something about this pony scared me, but I couldn't say what it was. He gave off a powerful presence, almost like Night Stalker. When I found my voice, I asked, Who are you? An almost evil chuckle came from the screen. You don't need to know who I am, Shadow. You just need to know that I know who you are. I've been wanting to talk with you for weeks, ever since I found out that you had the Mark II and Aquila. Sunspot and Elliot and Captain Gunny came walking over, all looking over the shadowy pony. Captain Gunny saying, Gunny be wanting to know who this is and why he's interrupting Gunny's looting. The stallion on the screen laughed. Funny, seeing an earth pony all the way at the top of Canterlot Mountain. I thought only Pegasi could get up there, nor unicorns. I'm even more surprised that any of you managed to get in. Gunny goes where Gunny feels like, Gunny said, frowning. What you be wanting? Nothing from you, dirt pony. I don't speak to filth like you. Same goes for those two escaped experiments behind you, the stallion said. I only communicating through his terminal because I saw that Shadow Star was here. I'm guessing you're part of the Enclave then, I said. He laughed again. More like the pony who runs things behind the scenes. I'm the one who's kept the Enclave strong for a long time. I'll admit, you've kept my Pegasi busy for a while now trying to track you down. You've even been able to somehow get a High Council pony on your side. Though I shouldn't be surprised. Nightshade would do anything for his daughter, wouldn't he? A shiver ran down my spine. I don't know what you're talking about. He slammed a hoof on his armchair, pointing down at me. His voice sounded sinister, even with that ghoulish tone. Don't play that game with me, Shadow. I know who you are. He held a hoof up to where I assumed his muzzle was and coughed into it. I know who your mother is. I know where she was hiding you for ten years. I also know what you've been doing. I know that you have my pip buck, and I know that you're keeping Aquila hidden inside your head. I'm not a fool. I know everything that's going on in the Enclave and in the Wasteland. He coughed again, but only more intensely. I've had my Pegasi hunting you since Nightshade pardoned you. Normally, I let the cities run themselves. But when I saw that you'd managed to worm your way out of more trouble, I figured it was time that I step in. Fine, so you know who I am and who my parents are. Big deal. What do you want? I asked. Oh, I'm sure you know what I want. I want the project that your distant grandfather tried to keep away from me. I want the power of stargazer and falling shadows. I also want the rangefinder, since that technology rightly belongs to the Enclave. He said. And what are you gonna do about it? Gunny asked. 
Yeah, what he said, Sunspot asked. I was talking to Shadowstar. If any of you interrupt our conversation again, I'll send my pegasi in to get you all, the stallion said. I looked at the others. Just keep quiet for now, okay? I'll deal with him. Then, while my head was turning, I mouthed, Get to the ship. Sunspot nodded at that and slowly started to back out of the view of the terminal. Elliot with her, but Gunny stayed, like, though he took a few steps back, muttering under his breath, Lousy, stinking peg. Don't like this none. Gunny doesn't one bit. Turning back to the stallion, I said, So that's all you want, huh? Well, too bad, because I'm not giving the Enclave anything. And what makes you think the uh, rangefinder belongs to the Enclave? The project was started by the Children of the Night. That fool Nightstalker was the one who made the Enclave into what it is now. Any project that belongs to the Children belongs to us. It's simple. Give us what we want, and we'll let your friends and your parents live. If you don't, we'll start with your father, then your mother, and then that Pegasus from 97. And so on, he said in a low growl. You should know that we have the power to follow through with our threats. Honestly, no, I don't. I haven't seen much of a threat from the Enclave since I've been out of my stable. The sins were a problem, yeah, but by now there's, what, three of them left? I said, rolling my eyes, then smiling. Four, he answered. Envy, lust, sloth, and wrath. Hard for them to come after me since they listened to my mother, I taunted. Gunny whispered from behind me. Shadow, Gunny don't think you should be saying things like that. Gunny's a good cannoneer and fighter, but he can't take on the sinner ponies. I ignored him. So, since you can't use the sins, who else do you have? Your military? From what I know about that, it's weak compared to the East. You don't have any pony to threaten me with. To my amazement, the stallion laughed. First of all, the sins now answer to me. They know you're part of a family of traitors. As for what I can use against you, that's easy. I control the entire enclave from the shadows. I can send any military after you that I want. Now stop with a small talk, and do as you're told. I rolled my eyes again. Yeah, no, I don't think so. I'm not scared of you or the Enclave. I'm not letting any of you get Falling Shadows, Aquila, or the Mark II, or the Rangefinder. Keep threatening me all you want. Come after me if you want. But I'm warning you now. If you try anything, I'll let Aquila out of her cage again. And you just try seeing what happens when she's at the helm of my body. She'll find you and rip you to shreds just for threatening her. He chuckled again, as if everything was funny. How do you know that's what she'll do? What if I've already spoken to her while she was using that tiny body of yours? You really should think before you threaten a pony like me, Shadow. Aquila isn't your ally. She wants her own body, and yours is a perfect fit. I've known about her for a long time. Remember that. Now, if you're not going to do what I tell you to do, then I think it's time for me to turn up the heat and bring you to me. Gunny thinking it's time to be leaving this place, like mole on hooves, Gunny said, taking a few steps back. Gunny knows when to be getting gone. The ghoul laughed. Run, run as fast as you can. I'll catch you no matter how far you've run. <laughs> I felt my heart slide somewhere in my stomach. As he laughed, the lights went out and an alarm started to blare. I turned to Gunny. We need to get out of here. Now. Gunny seemed to agree. He booked it for the entrance. As we ran down the hall, slots in the ceiling opened and gun turrets dropped down. I barely noticed them and the dim lights from the entrance lighting. Until one of them turned towards me and opened fire. The first bullet slammed in my combat armor throwing me back in pain as it ran up my chest. It felt like my chest was ripped open, but I couldn't just lay there. I pulled back to my hooves and 
followed Gunny down the hall. As I ran, dodging the shots from the gun turrets, I pulled out the shotgun I got from Bottle Cap and entered Sats. I aimed at the first turret and took two shots at the hinge between the gun and the control arm. There was a flash of light, and the shot just bounced off of what had to become some kind of shield. The turret opened fire, stopping me barking again, throwing me back into another wall. Shadow, they be shielded. There is no use booming at them, Gunny yelled. I figured that out, I said as I got back to my hooves again, running for it before the turret could hit me again. We just made it to the end of the hall that led into the main room, but another alarm started to go off. My eyes went wide as I looked towards the hallway that led out of the base. A blast door was starting to shut. I picked up the pace, taking hold of Gunny with my telekinesis, throwing him forward and just under the blast door. He went sliding along the floor as I followed right behind him, before the door slammed into the ground. And that damn ghoul pony didn't like visitors, does he? Gunny said as he got back to his hooves, looking back at the closed blast door. Getting to my own hooves, I slowly walked past him, my body hurting from all the bullets that hit my barding. Yeah, I find that happens a lot. He followed me as I made my way to the golden doors, opening them to find the twins standing just on the other side. As soon as Elliot saw us, he came running. Weird gunshots, are you two okay? We need to get out of here. I'm sure that asshole is going to send some pony soon, and I want to get as far away from here as I can. I said, wincing with every step. Short ones be getting a point. Captain Gunny is saying it's time to cast off, Gunny said, taking charge. I agree. Plus, this place gives me the creeps, Sunspot said, looking down at the pink mist covering the city below. Sunspot picked me up as Elliot took hold of Gunny. In a few minutes, we were on the bitter cob which had been moved closer to the mountain. Sunspot set me down near the front of the ship, then headed back to get the airship moving again. Elliot made his way over to the main cannon and started watching for Enclave ships, or ponies, who might be heading our way. Captain Gunny started shouting orders, which really wasn't needed since Sunspot and Elliot already knew what to do. It seemed to make the mad pony feel better, though. They all left me alone to lay on the deck and think about what I'd learned in a short time I'd spent in the old Children of the Night's base. I only went there to find a weapon that could destroy Aquila. But what did I find? Crap information, a few weapons I didn't need, and a fucking memory crystal? The Demon Slayer. It sounded like the perfect weapon to kill that bitch in my head. I should have known better. Why would the goddesses ever let it be that easily? It dawned on me then. Demon Slayer. Dad's old revolvers called Demon Slayer. Nah, could it really be that easy? Lifting my left hoof, I brought up the broadcaster on the Mark II. It took me a few minutes to figure out how to find the correct network to connect to Byte. Once I did, I opened a line to her. Byte, are you there? I said into the Mark II. A moment later, the filly answered. Yeah, what's up, Shadow? Have you found Aura yet? Not yet, I had to make a small stop, but we should be getting to where she is waiting for us soon enough. I'm calling because I want to know if Dad's still with you all, or if he went to the Enclave already. I asked. He left a few days ago. He said he couldn't be away too long or ponies would take notice. Why? She asked. I figured as much. I wanted to ask him something, but I can't contact him from out here. I said as I got into a sitting position. What'd you want to ask? He left us with a communicator that connects directly to him. I can get a message to him if you need to, Byte said. I took a moment to think about what I heard from that ghoul and what I needed to know of the Demon Slayer. If his revolver was the one I needed, then it wouldn't do me any good until I was back in New Pegasus. But he did need to know that some pony was going after him, and that they knew he was my father. So I said, What I need to ask can wait. But can you warn him about something I overheard? I told her about the encounter at the base. Once I was finished, Byte said, That doesn't sound good at all. I'll get the message to him right away. Also, how long do you think it's going to take for you to get home? I'm not sure at this point. Maybe a couple of days, depending upon what happens. Once we're past the town, where I'm meeting Aura, the wasteland will be extremely dangerous to travel through, even in an airship. I replied. Where are you right now? I 
Figured you would have met up with Aura by now, at least? Bite asked. We kind of just left Canterlot. I needed to make a stop there. I started to say, but Bite cut me off. You went to where? She yelled. Canterlot? The City of the Pink Death? Why would you go anywhere near that place? I needed to get something that could help me stop Aquila. I tried saying again, but she cut me off. Damn it, Shadow. I told you we have a plan. You didn't need to go there for anything. You had one job to do, and you failed. That job is to get home as fast as you can so we can take that bitch out once and for all. But no, once again, you think you have to go off on your own and try to deal with her yourself. Bite scolded. Bite, would you just listen? But she didn't let me finish. No. You have no control over her as much as you want to think you do. Every second you spend wandering around trying to take care of things yourself is another second that Aquila has to take over again. And we don't know if you'll be able to get a hold of her yourself after that. For fuck's sake, Shadow. Stop acting like a damn fool and grow up. You like to say how you're all grown up and no better than ponies like Wingnut and I. But you don't. You're just a spoiled brat who wants things to go the way she wants them to. Bite argued. And that was it. I had enough of her attitude to last me a lifetime. Shut the fuck up, Bite, and listen. Goddesses, don't fucking assume I'm trying to sabotage your well-thought-out plans. I'm merely trying to give us any advantage we need, and it won't fuck anything up. If anything, it can help, I'm sure. Yeah, I'll admit, it was dangerous, and I know I probably shortened the time I had control of myself. However, if I didn't go there, you wouldn't have known to warn my dad. Maybe you should think about that before you say it, huh? Bite was silent for a moment, maybe thinking about what I said. Afterwards, she spoke again. Fine, Shadow. We're just worried about you, but no more detours. Bite said, then she sighed again. Where are you right now? I think we're just going over the Everfree Forest, I believe it's called. Not too far away from Canterlot still. Why? I replied. Hold on a moment. She said. That took me by surprise as her mic went dead and a soft music came out of my pit buck. My eyes went wide as I said, She put me on hold? Elliot, who was only a few meters away, stopped what he was doing and looked over at me to say, I didn't know you could do that with a pit buck. I didn't either, that little bitch, I said angrily. Elliot chuckled. Comes with age. And to be fair, she had a good point. That entire trip was pointless. Says you, I snapped. Don't get me wrong. You also made a good point, but thinking about it, I mean, we didn't get that much loot. The Enclaves knows where we are again, and you didn't find what you were looking for, he said. Before I could retort, Bite came back on. I got your location figured out thanks to this Mark II, and with Wingnut's help, we know where you all be in a couple of hours. Aura and Solstice aren't far away. They'll meet up with you. She's going to keep an eye on you for us and make sure you don't do anything stupid. Wait, what? That's not the plan. How'd you even get in contact with her this far out? I said to meet you in... I started to shay, but she cut me off again. Your father has a way for us to communicate this far away. Just keep flying the way you are, and you'll run into her in a couple of hours. Now I have to go. I have a lot to do. See you later, Bite said before she cut off the communication. I wanted to reach through my pit buck and slap the shit of the little brat. She was like a female winged nut, but I couldn't do anything about it. And as for Aura and Solstice goes, there's no way either of them would change the plan again now that they knew how to find me. Whatever happened next, I was just going to have to go with it, because as much as I hated to admit it, Bite was right. It was stupid of me to go to Canterlot, and I knew it. So with another sigh, I got to my hooves and walked over to the upper deck. Shovel with the mare friend? Elliot said with a chuckle. Huh? Mare friend? She's a filly? I said, confused. You're a filly too. So what? He asked. I'm not a... I started to say, but cut myself off. Where I'm from, I'm not a filly. I guess Bite is almost the same age as me, though. So, I see your point. But no, she's not my mare friend. She likes my friend Wingnut. 
He looked at me with his head tilted to one side. I thought you had a... What do you ponies call it? Ah, he has a special sun pony. That's what Sunny said, at least. I do, but it's a special sun griff. You'll meet her soon, I said. A griffin, huh? Interesting. What do you mean we'll be meeting with her soon? I thought the griffin picking you up was on the other side of the forest, Elliot said. From the sound of it, plans changed, I said, heading up to speak with Captain Gunny. Elliot followed as I made my way back to the back of the ship, where Gunny was looking out at the distance. Sunspot, who was at the wheel, watched me as I walked closer to the captain. He was muttering something under his breath. That be right. Gunny will show you enclave who's boss of the skies. Took away my sown seed, they did. They'll make him pay for that. Now they want to be taking away Gunny's passenger. Not again, Gunny says. Not again. I cleared my throat, saying, Captain, do you have a minute? He blinked, then looked back at me. A minute is all most ponies have. Then the world could end like a boom and flash of plasma cannons. Does that mean yes? I asked. He shrugged, then sighed, saying, Ah, it does. And what can Captain Gunny be doing for you? I just got word from my friends. Looks like Ora and another friend of mine will be meeting with us in a couple of hours. They know where we'll be by then, so they want to meet with us early, I said. He took a moment to look back into the distance. After about five minutes passed, and I was just about to ask if everything was okay, he responded, That may be a good idea. Gunny has a feel that them Pegasi will be finding us again, and more fighters would be a good idea. They just said we needed to stay on the course we're on, and they'll find us. I'll keep us on track, Sunspot said. I looked back at her. Elliot was standing next to her. Even after spending a little time with them, I could still couldn't tell them apart. Their eyes were the only way I could remember which of them had what eye color on which side. I gave Sunspot a smile and said, Thank you. No problem, she said, looking back towards the front, then saying to Elliot, Keep an eye on the air around us. I agree with the captain. I think we haven't seen the last of the Enclave. Aye, aye. I'll take to the air and watch from up there. Our scanners are looking for anything within a mile around us. We should have plenty of warning, he said as he took to the air. Turning back to Captain Gunny, I saw he was looking into the distance like he could see the Enclave following us. Everything okay, Captain? He shrugged. Gunny be worried, that's all. I thought you weren't scared of anything, I asked. He chuckled a little. Gunny, be scared of a lot of things, Miss Shadow. Like so, Gunny hates spiders. Not the big ones, they be easy to shoot. The little ones be walking on you in your bed and creeping up your nose when you sleep. There be butter, never trust butter. Then there be losing some pony you love. Nothing be scarier than that. From what I've seen, you don't ever show a bit of fear, I said. It all be about the way you let other ponies see ya. If you show them that you want to be scared of them, then they have power over ya. So Gunny says never let them see his fetlocks be wobbling, or that he has ready to turn and run like a colt. Nah, Gunny makes sure they be scared of him, he said, taking a moment from his gazing into the horizon to look at me. I guess I can see how that would be, I said as he went back to looking at the depressing sight of trees and death below. After a few moments passed, I asked, Who was Sown Seed? He snapped his head around and looked at me. Who be telling you about her? No, Pony. I just overheard you a moment ago say something about her. Who was she? I asked. All right. Gunny lets his mouth run away at times. Apologies, Gunny said. Soon Seed was Gunny's wife. She was. She was the most beautiful mare in the wasteland. And Gunny were lucky to be meeting her alone, being her special sun pony. Gunny had four good years with her. But as it always was, the wasteland took her from Gunny. What happened, if you don't mind if I ask? I said. 
Then he turned away and took a few steps towards the deck, then looked back at me, anger in his eyes. De Enclave, that be what happened. Then he left for his room. Did I say something wrong? I asked Sunspot. Nah, he just doesn't like talking about her, that's all, Sunspot said as she kept her eyes forward. Hey, if you're not doing anything, I could use some help. Think you can take over navigation display and make sure we stay on course? I took a moment to watch Captain Gunny as he went from his room, then looked back at Sunspot. Yeah, I can do that. Just don't hate me if I suck at it. She laughed. Don't worry. If you need to ask me something, make sure you're doing it all right. Then that's fine. I smiled and went to stand next to her taking over the small terminal that sat a few feet away from the wheel. I felt myself relax as I fell into the simple task. In all honesty, it was one of the easier things to do on the ship. Now I was getting used to it, I kind of liked it. <laughs>